Howdy y'all. I am your professor, Dr. Kimberly Green, and I am thrilled to welcome you to EDCI 631. And uh, let's begin with that every video you get from me, there's probably going to be noise in the background, coughing, barking. Uh, I teach fully online for Bram and I'm, I'm an associate professor, full-time faculty. This is my 10th year at Bremen. And uh, so I work out of the home, I have my home office, and they're building a house behind me, and they're building a house next to me, and they're building a house on the other side of the house next to me. So there's, you know, there's battles you fight, and there's battles you just go, okay, I'm going to be coughing, and so I wish I could blame this hairdo on that, but I don't think I can that I don't know I'm being punished for something. Anyway, welcome to class. Uh, hello. I love this class. I am the course custodian for this course. Uh, I am continuously updating it. Every single time I teach it, I learn something new. I find new content, students ask new questions, and I'm counting on all of us working together to continue that wonderful tradition. There's no such thing as done. Differentiation, culturally responsive teaching, these are all works in progress. And all of us as professional educators are continuously, continuously called upon to remember that we, just like our students, are works in progress. We're never done. So I know we're coming in and everyone has a different philosophy or a different idea. Let it all go. Be willing to share what you think you know and be open to the fact that we are going to deconstruct and shred and rebuild and deconstruct some more and and that's the fun. It's Seymour Papert hard fun. Uh, nothing is done. Everything is subject to further discussion, discovery, another perspective because we work with people. And this class in particular is looking at a million different ways that we can best serve all those different people on their educational journey. Each one of us is a small blip in the other's long pathway and I take that very seriously. So I hope that you expect from me to number one, get great feedback. I will absolutely do my best. I clear my Mondays, try and get you lots of information you can use moving forward. It is incredibly rare that you haven't gotten the previous works grading and feedback and comments. Read the comments, please. It's not about the grades. It really isn't. And believe me, okay, I've, I've been in your shoes. I've masters uh, all the way, you know, uh, used to teach pre-KK, then got my credential, taught in elementary, got us another credential, taught middle and high school, masters, taught undergrad, doctorate, graduate, all kinds of graduate, postgrad, the whole nine yards. I understand the great thing. But for me, from my philosoph philosophic perspective, grades are a shorthand communication. You're really rocking this, uh, this needs more focus. It's the comments that are important. And I promise you, I put my heart and soul, everything you get from me is genuine. You may not like everything you hear, but know that when you get something that you're like, oh, she didn't love it, it's because I'm doing my best to inform you on what more you need to do to take your practice to the next level, to open up your understanding, all right? Uh, I'm from Iowa, so I am very, very honest. Uh, I have two kids. One is starting college tomorrow. I, yeah, taking the kid to college tomorrow. The 18 year old is going away tomorrow. And the eight year old is just going into fourth grade. So I am very empathetic to, if you have little ones, if you have middle-aged ones, if you got whatever you got. Uh, and life will get in the way because that's its job. But you've got to talk to me. If somebody's sick and somebody's gonna be late or you're falling behind, you've got to talk to me. You can't just vanish and you can't just sneak stuff in late. This course is scaffolded. I promise you the best of all I can bring to this course, I expect the same from you. Expectations. 
I expect you will engage authentically and honestly. A minimum of three different days throughout the week. Threaded discussions are conversations, not monologues. It is not Shakespeare. It's a conversation. It's negotiation of understanding. It's asking each other questions. It's, A, I don't get it. Where did that perspective come from? Help me understand better. It's respectful. But if it's just a bunch of, oh, yeah, good idea. I agree. Ugh. Would you sit in a room with someone and do that for six hours? Oh, yeah, I agree. Me too. Who learns from that? Nobody. I expect you will own your learning process. So, yeah, I'm going to push you. And know that I'm pushing you because I think this content, this course, the understanding, the empowerment of it is very, very crucial to truly being able to serve the learners of today. Be they the little bunnies, be they great big folk, <laughs> said the woman who's five foot tall, whatever, okay? I don't care what the age of your students is. Everybody's an individual. Your individuals, your students are individuals. This course is incredibly empowering if you allow it to be. It's not a data dump. I expect you will put your heart and soul into the work. I expect you'll be authentic. I expect you'll stumble and skin your knee a couple times and get back up and go, oh, really? Huh, okay. Let's try it from a different vantage point. That's what I expect. So. I look forward to reading your emails about how you feel about these expectations because that's how you can earn your extra credit. That's what I'm asking for. After you watch this video, think about the expectations I've shared with you. You'll see the class. And then I want you to send me an email. How do you feel about these expectations I have for you? How do you feel about the expectations I believe you should have for me? And are there any others? couple points extra credit for doing that okay and now with that said uh, is there anything else I should tell you I'm from Iowa major geek you'll get lots of videos um, technology is a way to communicate and learn and express ourselves and it will glitch and when it does there's always another way around it don't let it throw you use the blackboard help center don't be afraid don't let the technology define your learning experience. Make it work for you. Take advantage of it and all, it, all its affordances. And when it gets in the way, call somebody and say, hey, this isn't working. And I've tried this, this, and this. Make it work. Okay? Not me. Don't call me. Uh, call me if there's an emergency, a real live Chernobyl blood spurting out, something serious emergency. Text me if something serious happens. Otherwise, email me. You will get an answer within 48 hours. The iPhone is glued to my hip. I have two computers here. I got three iPads around the house. If you haven't heard from me, if you send me an email and you haven't heard from me within 48 hours, I didn't get it. Honestly, please resend it. Let me say that again. If you email me and you haven't gotten a response, within 48 hours means I didn't get it because that happens okay let's go to the class so whenever we land in the class we always land on the announcements page I do always try to email the announcements as well as just posting them but if I'm using a mobile app it doesn't always work so please do take the moment when you log in your minimum of three times across the week, minimum, please do always check the announcements. Make sure that at the very least, the first week you go through, start here. Yes, it's boilerplate stuff for the whole of the university, but there's some very important things worth noting here. Live text, our signature assignment must be submitted via live text. I do strongly encourage you to have both Google Chrome and Firefox. I personally go back and forth each browser works better for some different thing with Blackboard and every now and then there's an update from one and it doesn't work as well. So have them both, it doesn't cost anything. Online etiquette, please when you email me, do address me. And the same with your peers. Dear so-and-so, hello so-and-so, 
please don't just send an email, hey, what time is the five o'clock movie? All right? Not exactly kosher, as my people say. If you need help with Blackboard, you will be using Adobe Connect in this course. You'll be meeting a minimum of two times with peers in a group. All right, that's coming up, we'll get there. And at the very end of the course, either we'll do a whole class meeting or I'll offer a couple of different times or we might do one-on-one -on -one conferences. Every class is a little different depending on the individuals in it, but you will be using Adobe Connect. Remember, you log in as a guest to my room. It's my room, I have the account, you all log in as a guest. Student Code of Conduct, APA guidelines, there is writing in this class, all right? APA, very important. Uh, Office of Disability Services, please, you must go through them if you require any specific accommodations. And then of course, additional student resources. That's start here. Course information is the nerve center of our class. My bio, where you got this video, the syllabus, please go through this. Course at a glance, if you're only going to download one thing, please, please, course at a glance, every single week, <clears throat> excuse me, every single week, what we're focusing on, what we're doing, the different activities, what folder they're in, it's all there for you. You will note that inside Course at a Glance, there are two different colors used for the different activities versus assignments. Activities is a little more of a blue, assignments is a little more of a mauve or a purple. That is echoed in the different weeks. It's a purposeful design. It's a modification I made specifically for very visual learners. Uh, I tend to respond well. I sort things by color, and after speaking to several different students, I thought, yeah, that makes sense. If I do it for myself and it works, it certainly can't hurt for the students. So inside learning activities folder, learning activities. Inside assignments folder, assignments, all right? Now, I know in some courses, yeah, one class is a little more of just stuff you should go through if you get a chance, not here. You have to go through everything. There are different videos, there are links to different activities, be they wikis or whatever. Please, please, please. Now, there's a trick. If you're ever trying to click into a video and it's not working, you can always on a PC do the right click and say open a new window. And with a Macintosh, you hold down the control key and click on it, and you get that same as if you were right clicking, all right? So don't panic if a video doesn't open. Uh, the URL should be posted for you. I've tried to catch them all. There may be a few that aren't, but, and you know, worst comes to worst, you can always copy the URL, open a new window, and post it in, paste it in that way. All right, so there's always multiple ways. It's technology, guys. There's always going to be small glitches. Please don't let them throw you. Usually, if something doesn't work the first time, there's an easy fix to it. So have your technological band-aids ready and available. All right, let's go back to course information. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right, course at a glance, crucial. Now, late work policy. My friends, this course is very rich and there's a lot that happens. The schedule is very important. This is not a content stuffing course. This is reflection, this is scaffolding, this is constructivist engagement for you to authentically craft rich, deep understandings that are transferable out into the real world. Life gets in the way, I understand that. Kids get sick drama at work, talk to me. I will work with you. This is an overview. Please do go through it. It's a PDF. It gives you an idea of the big, big assignments and the little ones and how they all work together. Uh, various other bits of information. 
we have two texts in this class. We count live text as a third, but technically two texts. Let me give you a little APA piece of advice here. I've noticed this in my last couple of courses. There are two authors for each course. I'm sorry, two authors for each book. When you cite, you must always cite both. In the Tomlinson and Imbu book, in the Sleater and Kornbleth book, you cannot just cite one. There are two authors. The order of the authors is important. It must stay the same. Whoever is first is the one that did the heavy lifting. You don't switch it to make it alphabetical. Tomlinson is first for a reason. Sleater is first for a reason. You must always refer to both authors. All right, there's a little APA tidbit for you. Uh, all the major rubrics are here waiting for you. Please, please, right off the bat, go through our weekly threaded discussion rubric. There's a lot here, but it's purposeful. You'll see when you go through it that the only one of the criterion focuses in on quantity. You must do a minimum of three posts per week, per discussion. Your first post must be done by Wednesday night. And all of your three minimum posts must be on different days. This is purposeful. This is best practices in andragogy, the art and science of teaching adults. It is a constructivist formula for ensuring the greatest possibility of meaningful engagement. You must communicate with your peers. And again, go through the different guidelines on the rubric and you'll see quality, quality, depth of your posting. Engagement with your peers, sharing ideas, building upon those ideas, deconstructing things you think you know, asking great questions. You will learn more and I will learn more as to how to best serve you from you asking questions of yourself, of each other, of the material. Oh, Tomlinson and Imbu, what were you thinking on page five, blah, blah, blah. Don't fall into that trap of, well, I'm a teacher, so I can't ask questions. I have to be giving answers. Don't do that to yourselves. You limit yourselves. I don't ask you questions just to get answers. I ask you questions hopefully to stimulate even better questions coming from you because the answers you delve into and discover based upon your own questions are always more meaningful and delicious than just the ones that come from someone else. So please share your questions. Don't be afraid to do that. Uh, lesson study. This is a major assignment that takes place over weeks four, five, and six and it feeds into our signature assignment paper in week seven. You'll be working with a group. There's a lot more on that. Don't worry about it right now. Uh, you will be keeping a self-assessment log. There are several mini papers that you mush together into one midterm paper. Uh, and there's the midterm. So go through the rubrics. Everything you need to be successful is in this class is here as well as your peers. You cannot be successful in this class if you try and take it in a vacuum. This is constructivist. This is engagement oriented. This is truly about living what Vygotsky and Dewey and Papert and all my favorite theorists truly talk about. Learning is situated. That doesn't mean it's stuck in a context. It means that it is a part of who we are and who we work with and the tools we work with and how we use those tools and how the experts in the field use the tools. All right, so no, do not think of this as a course where you're all alone and you're sitting in your room and you're doing your work and not at all. We are a cadre of peers all working together to gain knowledge, to gain understanding, to craft rich, delicious, useful skills and meaning that we can truly, again, transfer out into the real world. Yes, I really am this corny. I'm from Iowa. I'm totally okay with it. So let's go on. 
uh, you've got the as overview, the texts, the rubrics. Again, there's no surprises here, no surprises. You know exactly what you're going to be working on. You don't know what it's going to feel like yet, so please don't try and work ahead because the course is scaffolded, but at least you're empowered walking in with your eyes open, knowing what to expect. Now, again, I want to point out that the course at a glance is a living document. It might change, might not, but it might. And why might it change? Why might I change the individual curricular experiences and activities? Because the course has to serve the learners. The curriculum has to serve the learners. It is my responsibility to ensure with everything that I can that by the time this class is over, you have truly mastered each one of the individual course learning objectives and the program learning objectives for this course. Thus, because every single course is made up of different individuals, I may modify things as we go. Every group is different, every person is different. Sometimes things go super fast and the next week I may say, you know guys, we were gonna revisit this. Don't worry about it, I pulled it. Sometimes I may add something. Guys, it doesn't seem like we got real clarity on this point, so I'm pulling that video back in and uh, I need everybody to focus a blog on this. Be prepared for that. Don't let it throw you, don't think anything's wrong. That's my role. And as educators who are truly serving individuals, we all need to be prepared. What I'm doing right now is I am authentically role modeling my philosophy of differentiation. The curriculum has to serve the learners. So the course at a glance might change. Might not, but it might. And there's no reason not to be transparent about that. All right, moving on. Just a couple more things. Uh, la, la, la. Grading assignments. There's our schedule. A Brahmin week runs from a Monday through a Sunday. So when something is due by the end of a week, it means it's due before you go to bed on Sunday night. I set aside Mondays to do all my grading. Sometimes it bleeds into Tuesday, and if I'm really slammed, it'll be Wednesday but I really try and do all my grading on Monday so you get feedback as soon as possible so you can use it. Know that the week ends on Sunday. Again, with the thread of discussions, three different days across the week. You cannot just pop in on a Saturday afternoon and do three posts and think, nailed it. You've got to engage across the week so that you're able to truly be in conversation. It may be asynchronous across time and space, but it's still about a conversation, not a bunch of monologues. All right, uh, Blackboard tutorials. You must check your Brahmin email. Please, please, please. There are group activities. I will reach out to you on a fairly regular basis because that's what I do. All right, uh, we will be using Prezi. If you haven't used it before, it's a wonderful tool. Uh, it affords communication in a somewhat nonlinear fashion, which PowerPoint does not. And it's far more meaningful because you're able to use a backdrop, be it in colors or in a, an actual image to convey meaning. All right, so again, thinking of different ways of communicating, opening up opportunities for students to share thoughts, feelings, questions, skills. Prezi is wonderful for that. All right, moving on. So what does a week look like? Well, I already mentioned that you'll see there's always two different folders. We start with a week at a glance. You have your two folders. Here's what's inside learning activities. Here's what's inside assignments. You must complete everything in both folders. To not do that is to shoot yourself in the foot. Please don't do that. Uh, in several of the weeks, weeks one through five, one through six, I can't think at the moment. You have a journal, blog, weekly wiki thing. You can either access that, obviously, through your learning activities folder. Weekly wikis. Or you'll notice on the left-hand nav bar, 
we have a link for course wikis. A wiki is a specific type of software. It allows you to edit without having to code. So it's malleable. The weekly wiki journal blog thing, the reason the terminology is so mushy there is because it truly is a reflection tool. When you go in, in the different weeks, there are obviously different prompts, different things for you to do. All right. These aren't private. Please, they're professional reflections. Not personal as in, you know, deep, deep, deep internal monologue. Don't share anything you wouldn't want your peers and or your professor and or your grandmother to know. Okay? How do you work in a wiki? Edit wiki content. Type, type, type. When you're done, submit. Notice there's a toolbar. If you don't see the toolbar, you can't edit. All right? Edit wiki content. Wait for the toolbar. Whatever you need, type, type, type. You must click submit or you will lose the content. All right. Now, also, if you noticed in course wikis, this is something I definitely do want to point out. There's a jigsaw, that's a whole class activity. Prezi presentation wiki, that's at the very end of the course. There are four groups. I want to point something out. You will be assigned a group unless you specifically pick one yourself. This is for the lesson study, and that's weeks four, five, six, and seven. We'll get there. I want to be very clear. Notice, because it's an ongoing activity to try and keep things organized in weeks four and five and six, there are individual pages for those weeks for you all to work on together. So when you first log into your home page, post your name and email here. All right, you click the edit, name, email, maybe what nights would be great for you to meet. You only have to meet once per week. Some groups meet two, two times per week, but you must meet at least once during week four and once during week five. Lots of groups also like to meet during week six to show each other their individual videos of their demo lessons of the lesson you all designed together. How's that for foreshadowing? Um, but you don't have to. All right, so I log in, I put my name, I, click, I clicked edit, I put my name, my email, when I'm able to meet, I click submit. But weeks four and five and six, not using the home page, I go into my wiki, click on the name. Don't click these little gray arrows over here. They're just gonna get you in trouble. Go into week four. Boom, here's my page, there's my edit. Week five, here's my page, click to do my edit. And week six, aha, like I said, each individual member of the group will do their own demo video. And again, there's a ton more info on this. This is just foreshadowing to give you a sense of what's coming. So don't panic that, oh, if I don't take notes now, it's all good, don't worry. Okay, so you will post your video. Please don't use real students unless you get every permission known to man. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. You can use your own kids, your neighbor kids. You can use kids from another class who aren't your students. When you post your video, you don't post it into Blackboard. You can post it on YouTube and put a password. You can post it in a free Dropbox and give us the URL. You cannot actually post a video into Blackboard. You will crash Blackboard. I know it doesn't say much for Blackboard, but I didn't build it. It's in the very same way that when you look at the videos for all, all of our classes, let's go in here. These classes are never, classes. These videos are never actually built into Blackboard. We don't upload video to Blackboard. We always link out to it. This very video that you're watching right now, I post to YouTube. Now I don't put by with a password. There's nothing scary here. There's no problem. I'm not mentioning any of you by name. If there are times where I make an individual video for someone, that won't go on Blackboard. That will go into my Dropbox and I will send you a direct link for you to get it. 
Okay? So please, please, do not ever post video directly inside. Post it somewhere else that's got the server space, be it YouTube, be it your Dropbox. Some people use uh, Google Drive. That's worked really well in the past as well for anything. <laughs> All right, none of these videos are actually housed in Blackboard. We always go out to see them. Uh, my virtual office. Okay, oh, and I haven't posted it yet. Well, you'll see my virtual office. Uh, actually, the URL is here. Okay, um, and you guys, you've probably already noticed, uh, I, I do, I like to laugh, I have a light tone, I like to have fun. I take the work very seriously, but I try and find joy in the process. So, like I just, I mean, that was a mistake. I should have already fixed that before I made this video. Oh well, I'll fix it. Please don't be embarrassed. A mistake is just something to go, oh, I gotta fix it or I'll, okay, learn from that, don't make that same mistake again. This is a safe space. We're all gonna make mistakes. If you blow an assignment, I'll let you redo it. I would much rather you put yourself out there and you try something different and it's a huge disaster and you learn from the disaster, then you do something simple and easy that you've done before and you don't really learn anything, but hey, you got an easy A. Who gives a hoot if you get an easy A? That's not gonna do you any good in the real world. This is a class that absolutely should serve you and every single one of your students. Please take advantage of that. All right, and I think this has gone on oh so long enough. Uh, I'm going to flip back over so I can wave goodbye because hair this horrific needs to be shared with more people than my family. Uh, talk to you in a minute. Okay, so that's enough of me. Please, please, we did that quick, brief walkthrough. Uh, again, you see my tone. I take the learning seriously, not myself. I'm asking you to do the same thing. Please, have a light tone in your voice. Even though we're dealing with some challenging things and how and uh, don't let it become a weight around your neck. I know it can feel that way. We want to serve everybody. We want to do our best. <sighs> that alone can be a wonderful source of support for others, for our students, for showing them that, yeah, problems happen and there's stress and there's drama, but we can still have a light touch and enjoy the learning process. So don't forget your emails to me expectations your expectations for me how you feel about my expectations for you minimum of three days across the week those threaded discussions incredibly important you will be present you will be authentic you will be open to complete renegotiation of understanding of all that you think you already know because we're all works in progress okay any probs i'm an email away Thank you, and here's to a great term. Happy fall one.